in any series or franchise, there is always one character who is the most recognized to the point they become the poster boy or the mascot. In the case of Transformers, it's clearly Optimus Prime, or Convoy, if you are more of the Takara persuasion. Like many Transformers, Optimus Prime first appeared in G1, as the heroic Autobot commander. Optimus Prime has often been regarded as the greatest leader in animated history, surpassing people like G.I. Joe, He-Man, and maybe to a lesser extent, Goku. Optimus Prime has single-handedly appeared in every single Transformers continuity, although Beast Wars has a homage to him in the form of Optimus Primal. It may have the same first name, but it's a different character. Movies, games, comic books, and TV shows, Prime will be there, as well as the case in Transformers Animated, but it seems he's been demoted in this series. Alright, what seems to be the problem? At the beginning of this series, we learn that Optimus Prime is not the great Autobot commander that we all know from other incarnations of the character. Instead, he appears to be a rookie soldier who trained at the Autobot Academy, but for whatever reason was kicked out and now finds himself working on space bridges with other bottom of the rung type characters. One thing that this establishes is that Prime is not a battle hardened veteran. He's not a proper soldier, he's still learning, and he uses Ratchet as a confidant whenever he needs some advice, because Ratchet is the only one out of the, the initial Space Bridge crew who's seen some form of action. Which is really interesting in this case. It's basically seeing Superman without his powers, because a lot of times in this series, Prime doesn't basically show up, shoot everybody with invisible range, and then go home with a cocktail with a blushing brunette. Instead, he makes mistakes. He's still a rookie, and he often... We often see him on the receiving end of an ass kicking, which is quite unheard of for a character like Optimus Prime. A lot of Prime's backstory is revealed in the episode Along Came a Spider, in which we learn he had some form of a friendship with Elita One and Sentinel Prime, which clearly parallels the G1 universe in which it was Orion, Pax, Alita 1 and Dion. What's interesting about this incarnation of Prime is that most of the Autobots in this series have never encountered Decepticon attack. Apart from Prime, Ratchet and Prowl, the characters don't have a lot of experience or training to deal with Decepticon attack. Most of them are just, you know, repairmen, scientists or lackeys. Which is clearly prominent because most of Prime's battles with the Decepticons results in him and the others being defeated. Painfully. Ow. What's really interesting about this incarnation of Prime is that he's more driven by emotion as opposed to doing the right thing, as his G1 counterpart did. In particular, there's one interesting scene in the episode Megatron Rising Part 1 is when he actually flips out and loses it with his Autobot team. Something very uncharacteristic for a character like Optimus Prime. The fate of the Earth and Cybertron hang in the balance and all I've got to command are a bunch of undisciplined, insubordinate malfunctions! In terms of his alternate mode, Optimus Prime appears to transform into a fire truck, but it seems in later episodes he just becomes a standard truck Maybe the G-Winers cried too much. And keeping with the series theme of no guns, Optimus Prime has a variety of different weapons and gadgets at his disposal. He has an Energon Axe which is capable of stretching to form a sort of lance gimmick, enabling him to pole vault across large areas. He has a foam shooter designed to shoot, well, foam, like a standard fire truck has. And his final other gimmick is he has grapplers in both of his arms very similar to that of Batman and Spider-Man. I was really skeptical about these additions at first, but after seeing these things played out, I don't miss the hand blaster at all. Or whatever it was called. Gotta hand it to you, you're good. Oh yes. Optimus Prime's voice is provided by David Kay, who previously worked on Megatron in Beast Wars and the Unicron trilogy. Kay's portrayal of Optimus has come under a lot of criticism due to the fact he makes him sound too young and inexperienced. But then again, many people would argue that nothing is good compared to Mr. Cullen. 
Yes. But some of Prime's lines are delivered quite well due to Kay's stylized form of voice acting. Next time, you might want to look both ways before you cross. <laughs> okay, you got- so Where do we hang this out? <laughs> I believe the expression is trick or treat. Yeah? Well, I have no idea what that means. Let's be honest here. There is no Transformers series without Optimus Prime. This incarnation of the Big Rig has been very interesting so far. He's pretty much sat on the fence in Season 1 of Animated, but in Season 2, he's starting to come into his own and becoming the great leader we all know he can be. Some would question his chemistry with Black Arachnia, but I really enjoy this incarnation of Prime. It makes him more human than his G1 counterpart. Animate Optimus Prime gets a 4 out of 5. He's got the touch, and he's got the power. Oh, that was such a bad joke. Yes. Yeah, right.